The opening material in Foundations of Sociological Theory may in many ways resemble material you learned in Introduction to Sociology. Sociology emerged in the late 18th, but largely throughout the 19th century, as an independent field of study. Often, sociologists, and especially initial sociologists, focus their attention on the analysis and critique of large social structures. The huge transformation was from a religious to secular point of view, that is, society as a human social creation, not one the divinely ordained. The 18th century societal transformation, that is, the transformations would be a better word, uh, industrialization, urbanization, secularization, and modernization paved the way for sociology as a discipline to emerge. These changes transformed how people think about themselves and society. Key to understanding sociology, or key a key distinction made throughout the textbook, is that between classical versus contemporary sociological theory. And classical theories were largely macro theories, and they consist of ideas, concepts, and the intellectual framework outlined by the founders of sociology. Contemporary sociology represents more modern theory. Often that transition in addition to extending or engaging with classical theories in more modern social context, often that transition involves a shift from large, macro, more speculative theories to empirical, uh, not logic-driven, but observational and measurement-centered theories, that is, from grand theory to what uh, we will learn Robert Merton refers to as middle range theories. So where does the Chicago school fall? That is the school of uh, observation, social, uh, symbolic interaction. This is tough to gauge and one could make a case uh, either way. The societal transformation set forth in Europe, uh, especially France, but the French Revolution then the American War of Independence, which uh, declared America's independence from uh, the UK or from Great Britain from England, and the idea of all men, actually should have all women also, are created equal, but all women were not created equal at the foundation, as we all know. We the people, and then the idea of political equality, or the rejection of inherited privilege as based in the monarchies versus uh, the elevation of freedom and equality in a democratic setting. The Enlightenment was pivotal in shifting these moves forward. With the Enlightenment came an emphasis on reason and scientific thought and the rejection and displacement of the power of religion, myth, superstition, and tradition. As we all know, the initial one, uh, religion, is uh, still up for grabs. Religion is still extremely powerful force in the contemporary world. Uh, enlightened thought focused on reason and rationality. Individuals have innate reason, the ability to think about things and the ability to govern themselves. Uh, and they have inalienable rights, that is uh, the rights of the individual vis-a-vis -vis the order and common good of society. The modern world, or the world in which sociology emerged, focused on reason and science, an with an emphasis on science and scientific arguments, empiricism, or an emphasis on observation and experience, things that can be known and explained. The use of reason and science produces human social progress, or science as the way forward. Uh, in the initial week and earlier, we saw uh, especially Galileo and the challenges of religious theological truths to uh, the emerging science 
uh, our empirical science of the pre-modern world. The initial, sci the initial sociologist did not create so much distance between himself and uh, the world he inherited. Comte wrote in France from 1798 and 1857, he believed in enlightenment thought, reason, and progress, but then, on the other hand, thought that sociology would become the queen of sciences and the uh, religion of the secular world. His emphasis was on positivism. Uh, he believed that society was as real and concrete as a table, uh, but he emphasized external empirical uh, positivism, that is, emphasized external observable empirical phenomena. Uh, it con was contrasted with theology and metaphysics, the nature of being and man's innate rights. Again, there was an emphasis on the discovery of patterns, regularity, and quotes, laws on how things rule, work. Comte, but positivism, was not so much concerned with critique, but rather with documenting and affirming the regularities in social life. The shift to the Americas, or the shift to visiting America, was initially marked by a real verifiable shift to observational social science. Alex de Tocqueville visited America in the 1830s and noted the democracy in America, the equality, democratic traditions, and social institutions. Harriet Martineau, likewise, visited America in the 1830s, uh, she, after, long after the American Revolution, or at least a generation or so after. She was interested in the practice of equality and actually highlighted gender and racial inequality in her notes regarding these observations. Hers was an interpretative approach. Uh, she initially translated the work of August Comte, shared his views of sociology as a science, believed in social progress, and thought that studying society is different in form and nature to the study of non-human objects. This is key to the later symbolic interactionist, but for her, sociology was a study of morals and manners, and it required us to take the point of view, a sympathetic point of view, in understanding human behavior. William Diltai may, in fact, the European William Diltai may, in fact, be the classical founder of symbolic interactionism or sociology as an interpretive understanding. Diltai is known for his ideographic methods. Key to theory is that different theories and theorists offer very different ways of looking at the same social reality. It's important to note, likewise, that different theorists are not always looking at the same social reality, and that too adds a dimension to the kind of theories or the way in which the kind of theories they formulate and the way in which they think about society. The different lenses, however, alone provide different assumptions and different emphases. Key is that society is not something in our imagination, even though it is something different than the phenomena observed in the natural sciences. Society is actually something other than what is created in the minds of human beings, even if that is its locus.